Over the last few months, some of the world's biggest brands have been forced to change the way they market their products to us amid the global lockdown. So we caught up with Emma Thompson, she's head of agency at consumer brands firm Golly Slater. And I started by asking Emma what these new marketing strategies were looking like and how the big firms and the fast moving consumer goods sector were seizing the opportunities to be had around the pandemic. Well, I think that there's been there's been a lot of really, really good news stories come out and brands uh, adapting messages and what have you, um, literally from the get go since it came out. And two major points, I think, um, for what their opportunities could be. One, it's about just like, you know, brand love, massive brand love. So even indirect brand love. So Disney came out really early and just flood and put uh, Frozen 2 out straight away. Uh, Brewdog changed their um, entire factory to make hand sanitizers, so did Louis Vuitton. All of these little kind of like benevolence that these brands are doing will actually help them in time. Um, because we look at Brewdog now and think they're an amazing, lovely company for doing what they're doing and, and helping the nation. Um, so th that's definitely a play. And then I think that the other opportunities that the big brands really have and that we've seen when we've been tracking the media and what they've been doing is relevancy. So any of those brands that are twisting their messages to be relevant to the mindsets of the human beings and what we're going through really, really will resonate going forward. So, uh, you know, big, big kind of shout outs to the likes of Guinness and Budweiser who quickly adapted their message to try and like, you know, bring a little bit of light entertainment to, to the stage. Um, and I think they, they, they do they, those type of brands and changing that relevancy and being mindful of the audience and how they're actually feeling is probably um, the biggest opportunity for especially like commercial brands. Um, I think the ones that have missed out are the travel companies. Um, I think it's very, very difficult for a travel company to continue to market but be relevant when their industry is literally in a state of absolute paralysis. Um, so the, the, there has definitely been some reasons to look at the market, you know, marketing world and seeing this beautiful creative that's, that's just flooding to the marketplace um, and putting smiles on people's faces and, you know, let's face it, that's what brands are here for, really, um, to build that brand so that you have that connection when you buy that product. Is there a sense that the lockdown, this whole thing, this pandemic, uh, that no one could have seen coming? Um, but did it somehow catch the industry on the back foot? Because, for example, in the financial services industry, uh, these people do risk assessing all the time. And I'm just kind of wondering what happens in the marketing and media world. I think it, it absolutely did catch us all out. I think even, if, even the day before lockdown, we were all just a little bit um, stunned. You know, I think that's the word, absolutely stunned. Um, I think brands because they're manufacturers as well, um, they were probably more, they found operationally, um, sorry, they found that they had to really kind of go introvert and, and nasal gaze at uh, their operations to get themselves into a retail environment versus into a um, pub environment um, and change their stock lists and what have you. So it, did it catch them out probably and did the marketing suffer for, for some it would have done because they had to really really look internally at their operations um, a couple of the big brands that we worked with literally stopped and halted absolutely everything for a good three to four weeks while they were just centralizing everything pushing it all straight back into their ops um, retailers themselves, they kind of closed the door on any media opportunities within week one. Dun Humby came out and said, we're not, we're not, we're not letting you spend any money. Um, you can't buy any media slots, not even digital media slots, because everything and everybody was being focused on just making sure that the nation was being fed. Um, they're starting to reopen now. So the digital um, media slots can be booked in retailers um, as of probably, I, th I think it was probably last week, they can start um, putting that in. But it's only because it's a massive revenue gain for, um, for the retailers that they've been missing out on for 
for six to eight weeks. So I think that, again, yeah, it was probably very much, it was like triage for, so major brands who are manufacturers had to triage their, their organizations. And I think that's probably the best way. So did it catch them out? It did, you know, regardless of risk assessments. Um, I think that we have risk assessments if our buildings burn down, not if our total operations have to cease and, and change in a different direction. So yeah, I think it's, it's caught the world out, hasn't it? How do you imagine the messaging lines are gonna change after a unique experience like this? I think that hopefully we've learned, we've, we've learned to be a lot more agile, you know, um, because messaging has, has adapted and changed to make it absolutely relevant. Um, I think that from a media sector perspective, um, and I've actually taken some governance from my head of media because I'm not a head, of, I'm not a media expert, but um, she she predicts that new law, no, new normal is going to pretty much be dominated by three types of adverts. Um, very very much FMCG reacting to new normal um, and being more relevant. So. Um, you know, I'll state Carlsberg um, out on that and Guinness doing really, really good stuff. We've seen a lot of the food aggregators like Deliveroo and Uber Eats really reacting really, really well in the marketplace with regards to media. So that's a, that's a big thing that's coming out that we're, that we're, that we're seeing that they, these guys are doing it really, really well. Um, and then the second one is obviously like the likes of like um, um, kind of... Um, well, we've got a lot of government messaging, so which is taking priority. So the new normal will probably be flooded a lot more with them um, public service announcements. And I think going in for the next six months, those draconian public service messages are going about social distancing, washing hands, hygiene, all those type of things are really going to start continuing. I don't think they're ever going to stop. Um, I think what might happen is those uh, the media spots that they were using for social distancing might then change to going back to nanny state culture. So we're going to have more about obesity. We're going to have more about like taking care of ourselves. I think that we are probably going to turn quite 1984 on the world <laughs> um, with regards to public service, um, public sector messaging. And then um, I think the, you know, the, the third one is, is, is I don't think that the media space will be dominated as much as it was with the travel industry. Um, I don't think that they will be able to afford to do it even in 12 months time. So um, people will have to seek out inspiration for holidays. I don't think we're gonna have it served up to us. And that, that's a really, really big industry um, for media space and um, tourism. And I don't think that they're gonna be doing much um, pushing of um, inspiration to get people to book their holidays. In your brand conversations with your clients, what are, what are they asking for most? They're asking for reactional um, relevant media. Um, they're asking for um, they're asking for campaigns that, that show that they're supporting um, the mindsets of human beings at the moment as we you know as we speak there a lot of them are having to react because the media booking space that they had was dominated for the olympics for example or you know was going to be on football um where do they put the media what goes in place do they cancel it off completely i know coca-cola have cancelled all their media down because they just don't really have they don't know how they can play a relevant part at the moment in media space without it looking as if they're trying to be commercial so they would rather take a kind of risk averse approach and just do nothing. And that's probably the right thing for them to do. Um, and again, someone like Coca-Cola is spending so much time pushing back into the operations to get plastic bottles sorted rather than, um, you know, stuff for, for bars and restaurants. But they really don't really, they haven't got the bandwidth um, to, to focus on, on, on media. Um, I think that at the moment, again, going back to the kind of psychological play of human beings, we use outdoor media um, as part of our customer journey planning. So we would say, right, from, you know, from sofa to shelf, how can we drive and influence the purchase and change our messaging? That's, that's kind of the expert area that we're, we play in. And I, I think that at the moment, because of where we are and potentially going in for the next three to four months, it's 
all of the outdoor media will probably not get consumed by someone who is in a complete kind of like dormant state of um, guerrilla shopping or they're on that mindset just to go out, do something and come back because that's what we've been told to do. So anything that's out there now is probably a waste of money anyway, unless it's a, a, a public health reinforcement message. How are you surviving the lockdown? How are you getting through it? How are you keeping sane? Um, me personally, I'm trying as much as possible to practice what I preach. Um, trying to look after my own people. I tell them to drink water, exercise, spend time with your family, but quality time with your family. Um, and yeah, my, my coping mechanism, I realised this week, is better for me to try and detach from um, having my work in my in my kitchen um, and I'm fortunate to be able to own, you know, be walking distance from the office and be able to come in and, and be in a safe environment and um, I would say just just really understand yourself and understand what you're going what what you're feeling um, necess isn't necessarily um, any external factors is making you feel like that. So don't try and like allow your brain to attach itself to something when it's just your brain playing tricks on you. That the state of isolation isn't a nice thing for any of us. Um, but just try and relax into it um, and do some yoga. You know, I've been doing yoga, so yoga's great. I'm via Zoom. <laughs> So, so no, I'm trying as much as possible to keep sane in, 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 in this and always think that it's not forever. You know, World War II went on for four years. This is going to go on for the maximum. The maximum this is going to go on for is six months. Let's not moan about it. Let's just crack through it and just see what new normal actually looks like. Sure.